everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can deploy the latest brand new project type of .NET 8 called .NET Aspire. Now, I've already talked about what .NET Aspire is and what problem it solves, and I will have a quick recap in this video, but if you want to know more on that in detail, check my previous video on the subject. In this video, we're going to focus on deploying this on Azure, not because Azure is the only place where this can be deployed, but because it is actually officially supported by Microsoft because, well, they own both things, but this isn't something that will only be possible in Azure. In fact, AWS and the AWS.NET team already work on bringing support for this in AWS, and they have actually been involved even before Aspire is released. So Aspire itself is cloud agnostic, but Microsoft has a very easy way for you to deploy your Aspire applications in Azure. And we're gonna see how to do that. I will also talk about the aspect of this deployment that can be generic and you can use to deploy anywhere. If you like that type of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let's recap and see what we have here. What I have from the previous video is a weather app API that only has an endpoint to return some fake weather, basically what's already there in the project template. And then I have a Blazor web application that is using a web client to call that API and get the weather back to display it. Now, all that could be to individual applications, but we actually use the new app host type of .NET Aspire to run both of them as a distributed application. And on top of that, we're using a Redis cache container to cache the weather for five seconds after the first time it's requested. So I can go here and say, run my Aspire application through the app host, not individual apps. And as you can see, my Aspire dashboard is running and my Redis container is also running. So if I say, click here, I can see the weather and this weather is cached for five seconds. If I wait for five seconds, then the temperature will be recached into Redis and so on. And I have traces, telemetry and so on to see exactly what happened to that request, including the Redis caching and the call to my API. Now, all that running locally is fine, but what happens when you wanna deploy an application like this with this new distributed application type, these things need to be containerized in some way and run somewhere in the cloud. We're gonna need a Redis container. We're gonna need so many things. Now, at the very surface level, what happens is .NET Aspire is actually agnostic of deployment. It doesn't really care how you're gonna deploy this application. It's not part of what it's doing. Instead, all you get in Aspire is a way to generate a manifest.json describing everything that's happening in your applications and how Aspire is wiring everything up. And that manifest can be taken then and translated into Bicep or CDK or whatever cloud environment and type of infrastructure as code and so on you might need. The command to generate this manifest through the publisher goes as follows. First, you wanna go into your Aspire project and then you're gonna go into the app host. And once you're there, you wanna say .NET run the publisher with the name manifest and the output path should be manifest.json. The moment I do that, project will be built, everything will be discovered, and what I'm going to get after a few seconds is a JSON file that describes everything in my system. For example, over here, I know that I have a few resources. First, I need a Redis cache, which is of type Redis. I have a weather app, which is of type project with the path to the project, so I can write something that builds my project, a few environment variables, and then all the necessary bindings. Same for the front end and some other connection strings generated dynamically based on other things in this JSON file. And that is it because this app is fairly small. Now I'm gonna close that and go all the way up to where I was, which is the solution level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually deploy this in Azure using the Azure Developer CLI. Now the Azure Developer CLI or AZD is something you can actually install using Winget or Choco very easily. I'm using Choco, so all I need to do to install it is Choco install AZD. And that is it. And once you do that, you have access to the AZD command. Now, if you do this and follow along, you will also want to do AZD auth login to make sure you're logged in to your Azure account because we're gonna go straight from the command line and deploy everything to Azure. Now, before that, real quick, I'd like to let you know that our Black Friday discount on dometrain.com is now live. You have until the 27th of November to use discount code Black Friday 23 to get 40% off any of the courses and 20% off any of the already discounted bundles. So this is your once a year opportunity to invest in your learning and learn anything you need to thrive as a .NET developer from unit testing, integration testing, we have clean architecture, DDD, Check out our courses, link down below, use code BLACKFRIDAY2023. And two things, our EF core is not included because it just launched, so that just gets 20%. And the code will only last for 500 purchases 
per course, so you might want to hurry. This discount has actually been in early access for some days now to my Patreons and our mail list, so make sure you subscribe to our mail list as well if you're going to get these early accesses to discount codes. Now back to the video. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here to start the deployment process is say azd init, and this will now take the code in the current directory and start scanning and try to detect what exactly we have going on in our application. And we actually detected a .NET Aspire application. The host was found over here. And what we're going to say is, yeah, you found well, and you can generate the files necessary to host the app in Azure using Azure Container Apps. So containerize our applications and then use containers where needed for things like Redis and my applications. And I say, yeah, you detected well. Let's go ahead and move on. And then what we asked is, hey, what do you want to be accessible from the outside internet, so me as a user, and what do you want to leave internal? Well, the weather API is only accessible from the front end. So what I'm going to say is make the front end accessible to everyone and then go ahead and don't do anything about the API. Just keep it internal. Once I have that, I'm going to be asked for an environment name. What I'm going to say is weather staging over here. This could be weather prod, weather, whatever. I'm just going to call it weather staging and give it an environment name. And then what's going to happen is we're going to generate this azure.yaml file and then a next steps markdown file. Now we are given instructions on how to deploy this application and provision an environment by doing azd up. But quickly before I do that, I want to show you what's in the next steps dot markdown. So over here, basically, you're going to see instructions on how you can deploy this application with Azure pipelines, GitHub actions, how you can choose an environment, how you can provision your environment, how you can use the Azure.yaml file, how you can do basically anything, including some things about billing and so on. We won't really need any of this because I'm just going to deprovision everything after the video is finished, but it's good to know that we're given some instructions on how to do things. So what I'm going to do now is say AZD up, and what this is going to do is provision my environment and deploy my application. So AZD up, and this will now go ahead and download Bicep if you don't have it, and then provision using it. Then I'm going to choose the subscription I want, which is this one, and then I'm going to choose a region, let's just say UK South, because it's close to where I am. Once this is done, Bicep Provider will be initialized and everything will start moving forward. I'm just going to skip through that to the finished deployment. Now, it's very likely when you try this for the first time, you're going to get an error like this saying that, hey, you're unauthorized to push basically the container to the container registry generated for you. This is something you can very easily fix if you go to the container registry over here. You can go to access keys and just to prove that everything is working, you can actually enable an admin user over here. And once you do that, you can go back and do AZD up again, and then everything will be redone, but you're going to basically skip all the way to this last part over here very, very quickly. And then your app will log in and then push the container image. As you can see, it is happening right now. And after a bit of wait, as you can see, both applications have been deployed with both an internal weather API address, which I can't access from here, but also the front end, which I can just click on and see. And because this app was all built in Aspire, I don't need to do any special wiring on connection strings or anything, because that will all be taken care of using all the configuration that Aspire will use internally. Because effectively what it's doing behind the scenes, it is using environment variables and a configuration mechanism to overwrite connection strings as they are needed and changed in deployment. So if I just go to weather, I'm going to get the weather and I'm going to get the weather cache for five seconds because there is the Redis cache here. In fact, nothing changed about my application and it is still deployed in Azure as a container distributed system. In fact, as you can see over here, these are all the resources that make my application. We have the container registry to push those container images. We have the container apps environment and then the individual container apps, both for the weather API frontend and Redis cache without me having to do anything. Now, by default, I don't get any sort of monitoring, so I won't have access to something like application insights, but it is very easy to implement. Effectively, what I would need to do is grab the instrumentation key or the connection string of application insights from some configuration means, maybe an environment variable, and then get that and add it to each project. So say with environment, then give it the environment variable name over here and pass it down as a string. This, of course, assumes I've already provisioned application insights. So you might want to update your provisioning mechanism to also create application insights for you to use it here. And you have to do the same thing, by the way, on the weather app itself, assuming you want this to be instrumented as well. And really, that is it. And this is very, very simple. This is done by design. Microsoft wants to make this thing to work 
flawlessly and painlessly with Azure because .NET is there in a way to sell Azure. So the name of the game is how good can AWS make this experience for themselves? And I don't know if GCP will do something similar. I don't know how many of you use GCP. In fact, if you do, let me know in the comments down below. But this can work both with the Azure Developer CLI, with the Azure CLI, and also with Azure Bicep if needed. So all three approaches are supported officially by Microsoft. I think the one thing I'm missing is the instrumentation by default, the application inside stuff, uh, and also maybe some way to have a dashboard, the same dashboard I would have locally, maybe have that on deployment. I don't know how feasible that would be, but it would be very, very handy for observability purposes. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this and what is the thing you're most excited about and most worried about about all this Dota and Aspire stuff? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.